I wanted to show you the process that I use in creating or starting off with one of my pieces. This is the original drawing and you're going to see some white lines on the different areas. You're going to see from the beak area back into the feather area. That's going to be one of the first big pieces that I'll be cutting out. And then you see the other markings that I've made for other pieces that will be on top of the overall first layer, so to speak. And then I'll be building up from there with different layers. And you can see basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm actually going back to some of my original drawings and getting my measurements. So when I go to purchase the mahogany, I have what I need and I'm not going back three or four times. And of course, this is what her mother, this is what her sister looks like. But at the same time, you're going to see how this is a puzzle. After the first layer is cut out, then I move on to the second layer and then the third layer and I keep on building up from there. But overall, she's coming along nice. No better way to spend a cold, rainy, sleep Sunday afternoon than working on my eagle, on my new eagle, Wing Victory. And as you see, here is the head of her beak area. And the piece you see next to it will go under the area underneath her head to give her more fuller head, head space when she's done. And as you'll see, you'll notice, you'll see the pieces here that are being laid in already. The first layer will be the drawn in area, which I'll be putting down first, and then the next two layers on top of that. So already we're going to have two, four, six inches of of height to her but that's the way it's going to be it's going to be like eight inches high from the highest point down to the base of the eagle when she's done and you'll get a better idea of the overall presentation but i think overall it's been a day well spent hope you're enjoying it the journey continues the next stage of our journey this is actually the back side of our carving the wing area, the larger wings, and there'll be a wraparound, so to speak, on all the carving on the front sides and the back side, so everything matches up. And as you're going to see here is all the wood laid out. So when I flip this over, There she is, all ready to go, and lay out on the wood. It's going to be an interesting journey. Up until now, all stacked and ready for the next stage of our process. What I generally do at this period of time is I'll put a piece here in my studio and as I'm working on other commissions I'll observe her for about a week or so and really go over all the different layering and all the different layers to make sure I haven't missed anything. And at this point there's a lot of irregular shapes but mostly once I start shaping her those shapes will flow into each other. And as you're going to see there's a multitude of layers. This is about 10 inches thick or high I shouldn't say thick. And that process will quickly come down as I start working on it with power tools. It's a little bit going to be a little bit higher than her sister and a little bit thicker around the neck area but overall it's going to have the same presentation just a little bit more prouder and a little bit more higher than her sister. I hope you're enjoying the journey so far and that's it for now. Till later, bye. The saying is, a penny for your thoughts. In this case, it's not much of a penny, but it's more so the depth that I've started to lay in on the front of her. As you will observe, I've outlined all of her feathers and part of the flagstaff. The claws that, that will be really exaggerated here, I've cut out and, and just laid in place so far. And we'll go down to the end here, and you'll observe that part. And 
the front part. Now what I'm starting to do is that what you can't see here is I'm actually going down in depth. You'll notice that there's a big difference in depth right here compared to here. And what I'll be doing is I'll be going all the way down this whole line here until I come to the end and I'll be working my way back into here. And this will become a lot deeper and a lot thinner as I go back. This part here, this will be my last section of depth. And the same thing that will happen over in here when I work on this area. So far, so good. Just wanted to keep you up to date. Bye. I wanted to share or show you the process that we're going to be going on to next. You notice all the deep lines that are into each. In this case, this is the banner or the flag. And then we come over here into the feathers, the tail feathers on the back side. And we look at the wing area. And you can see I'm starting to carve that in. And of course, the other wing area, and you're going to see how that looks. Now, the difference is going to occur as I start making my cuts or really giving each each feather in the wing definition. Uh, they all look skinny now but cut but then again you have a groove here and a groove here but when this is all removed you're going to have a, a much wider feather on each wing. So basically what you're going to be seeing here now is just a lot of deep cut lines but in the next step you'll be seeing actual feathers which makes it much more interesting than all the lines. So, on to the next stage. I'm hoping you're enjoying the journey as much as I am. I'm often asked what tools I use the most or what tools I use in the carving of my eagles. And in this case, you'll get an idea of, of the multitude of different ones that I do use. Flat tools, marking tools, outlining tools. That's called a dovetail or a fishtail. Each one has a form or a function, and each one makes anything go a little bit easier, a little bit faster in the carving process. And as you're going to see, I'm starting to take down the front side here, getting the feathers laid down to a proper size. This is actually the back side, the front side of the banner or the flag. And of course, our feathers, our wings. Each feather is unique, each feather is starting to take shape. We're going from, let's say, from this side over to here you start to see form and function on each particular feather that makes up the wing. I'm going to flip it over now do the back side but you're getting an idea of how the process will continue until she's done. I'm going to show you or share with you the progress on the wing. And as you're going to observe the front side and the back side. And what I'm going to be doing here is actually taking the feathers and having them go in the same pattern as you're going to see right about here. This will flow around this way and this is going to flow around this way so the pattern is, is consistent on both sides so the wing has the same flow or the same pattern on both sides. It's a little detail that I like to have in all my pieces. So they're as, as realistic as physically possible. And as you can see, or observe, how all the feathers are really coming together. And I'll give you a little fast shot up here of the banners. Even though she's upside down, she's really, oops, whoa, <laughs> down to this side. And of course this side. Hope you're enjoying the journey. As you will observe, or, or as you are observing, I should say, some more, she's all glued together using high strength Gorilla Glue. It's a gap filling, waterproof glue that I use on all my pieces today. And as you'll see, here's her head, and her head's going to go 
right into this position when she's done. And you'll get a further look at her depth and height right now. And it's quite considerable. Right now, I actually put her on a scale and she weighs about 100 pounds. Probably weighed a little bit more, but I've carved a lot of the wing area down. But now, right now, 100 pounds would be fair. But you're getting a good idea of how tall she is and how tall she's not going to be once she goes on her diet, so to speak. I'll be taking the areas away a little bit at a time to give her form and function. That's all for now. Bye. A bright, sunny morning here on the vineyard. And I'm getting ready to start shaping our evil. As you can observe, there's my little chainsaw. Start to shape her down. You have to excuse the background noise a little bit. I'm outside in front of my studio and I got traffic going up and down the street, but that's the way life it is in the summertime on the vineyard. But you're going to see the black line. That's going to start shaping the bottom of her head. I want to do that first before I start doing the top. So when I start doing the because once I do the top, it's kind of hard to flip her over and do the other side. But I want to get that part started first. And as you're going to observe, keep myself out of peace. You'll see all the different layers here. And overall, she's going to be one big beauty when she's done. And here's the back side. And that's going to be just about it. It's kind of dark there, but so be it. That's all for now. Bye. You will observe this is about an hour and a half to two hours later on our carving. Every once in a while I just step back and do the progress, so to speak. But you see how this complete area here has been taken down from being over here all the way down into here now. So all that's been removed. All the interior is starting to take shape all along here and down into here. The brownness of the body is starting to take form. Not doing too much to the head right now. I did underneath, as you'll be able to observe right here. Sorry. But you can see right there how that's been taken down. And then I'll be rounding out the whole body at one time. And they can get into more of a rounded half body. So to speak. Now you'll see the back side and how it flows down all the way into here. So we're basically getting a shape and a form that this is going to dip down and then come back up and then dip down and the head's going to come up this way. So it's just a process of a little bit of time until I get the shape down to where I want it. That's all for now. More, more to come later. Bye. Further smoothing out and actually starting to lay in some of my lines. What's going to happen here is the head is going to be coming up like this. But the body's going to be coming down then I'm going to have a slope here for the wing to really be pronounced coming up in through this area here. You can see some uh, registration marks that I'm putting through now just to give myself an idea. This is, I'm not going to touch this too much right now, but this part here will be rounded off to make sure her body comes into a nice semi-circle here. This part here will be taken down to where this blends right into the overall body and the wounds flow right into her body. A lot more being taken down here probably taken down all the way into here layer by layer but I'm still going to try keeping the different layers here so what's going to occur is ultimately able to have a nice flow of water all the way through all this area and last but not least the back side has been all smoothed out and you can see the overall she's progressing nicely more to come later bye our journey continues and you'll be observing how this is starting to slant down, come down and go up. And it's the same thing back here with her body. This part here is starting to flow right into the feathers. The back part of her body is going to be flowing right into the body of her feathers and this is all coming, tapering down and flowing in. The back side wing area is now flowing more smoothly into this area. What I'm going to be doing though is I'm going to slowly start figuring out how much more I want to take off the top of the wing and then make my swoop down into here around her neck area to make a very dramatic wing area and then come in and then have her head more again more of a pointed and, and you can see 
down here, how she's starting to rise up, but this part here is going to have to come down and then up. So it's just a process of a little bit of time. This is about two hours work, two and a half hours work, more so than, than that. I'll be working on this in the back side here, all along the bottom. So we we'll curve it in and get to the back side here. So she's progressing nicely. We're gonna come back for now. Sorry about that. Bye. Our journey continues. You'll notice that I'm starting to mark off some lines that's gonna give me more of a flow to the wing area, and then this is gonna come down, this is gonna be smoothed off. And then we're going to have a flow of the feathers coming up and around in the wing area. The body itself, taking a lot of area down, but I want to make this area here more of her body so the body flows into the feathers down here. And the wing area here, you'll be seeing this is going to be coming down and around. I'm starting to cut into the body so it, it actually will go in and look more full or rounded, so to speak. But this part here, I have to really cut into the body, be this part out, but cut into the body this way, so she has a fuller and rounder body. Now getting up to the head area, I'm going to dip this down now, and come around and down, and then come bring this part down and around and into her body down here. So we're going to have a much more pointed, more pronounced beak area. And the back side, you'll see the back side, I've marked the back side where she has to go, and I've started to round off this area going into the body. And yeah, that's all for now. Bye. You will observe that I have been laying in her feathers. All the small little details that will start making her a complete carving. Now this, two days doing this, but it's really coming now. You'll be seeing more detail as I go over all the pencil marks here with a darker pen to give me some clarity and precision in the pieces. This is the front side. Walk around here and you can see the end, how that works down. And of course, I've wrapped the feathers around the back side so she's gonna have a full body carving, the same as her mother. The head area and the body here has started to come in and it's gonna come in more as I lay in the feathers. It's gonna come in and flow into the body there also. But overall, been a journey on the feather parts, but this is the fun part now. The fun begins. You can see how this flows now into the overall body and down into here. More to come. Next time you see her, she'll be drawn in and starting to carve it. Bye. More progress or more laying in the detail of the feathers. I'm basically using the chisel, drawing with the chisel, carving in my lines, controlling the chisel to carve each line in and to give it the start a depth and detail that I'm going to need on the overall piece. In doing this process, I basically lay them in, but as I progress on the carving, they'll become deeper and they'll give me my basic shape for form. As you'll be observing, I'm using the edge of the tool and literally using that as my pencil to carve out each line. It's, it's a process that I've learned to love to do because I have complete control over the chisel and I can really give it the detail that I really like to have. I'm putting in just a line to have a line, putting in a line that will give me some form and some function as we progress on the piece. And I just basically take the tool from one edge to the other edge and I flip them around until it's finally done. Our journey continues with wing victory. This is the back side of our head or beak area. The face is starting to take shape. The feathers are lined in or drawn in that will flow in, into the main body of, of the eagle. And this will flip right into here. And you'll see how that is appearing now. This is the front side. Even though the front side looks like the back side, the front side is, of course, the front side. The front side will be elongated, and the back side will be shortened because it is the back side. And now the body here is going to flow down more in, the head will flow into the body, and have a flow to, it, to the back side, and around, and down you see I'm carving more into here so I'm having more of the flow coming out but overall she's coming along nicely it's just you carve some and you look a lot you carve some and you look a lot and you don't just keep on carving without actually stepping back to see how everything is appearing and you see how the beak area 
has come to shape. Other than that, more to come as I progress. Bye. All of our feathers have been carved in, as you will observe. The whole body is starting to actually cut into the different areas and start laying in the detail into each feather. You'll be noticing how that's coming along. <coughs> the head and the body itself. This is flowing down. It's going to flow down. This part here is going to flow down more into the overall body. The wings are going to be tapered in. I'll be doing some back filling back here. But basically they're going to have some depth to them. And then you can see the end here. I'll go back to this side. You think with all these tools here, you know, you think I knew what I was doing. I hope I did. Back here, this is all notched in and all scribed in, so I'll be carving all this in, how it flows into the head back here, and of course how it's going to flow more back into the body here. So our latest, hope you're enjoying the journey. More to come as we progress. Thanks again. Bye. Our journey continues. And as we progress with on her, you'll see that all of her feathers are now flowing down and in and flowing down and around and into the wing area, which will have a lot more detail into it. I'm going to be doing some back filling here, but mostly everything here has been set in, the detail has been set in. And I'll be doing a little bit changing here. I, I like the pattern of the, of the wing, so I'm changing that somewhat. But overall, She's really coming to life. You'll see the head, a big area, how proud that's starting to look, and you'll see both sides right there, how nice that came out, or how nice it's going to come out. And the wing area, and, the, and of course the back side area. You'll see how that looks. But overall, she's really coming together as a whole piece, and our journey is progressing nicely. I'm going to set it down for a day or so, and then come back to it. I want to observe it. Let's see if I have any hiccups. Bye. I wanted to share how she looks up in the air, so to speak, with all the carving and the detail. You can see the head now. Everything's starting to flow together. How the head area here is now flowing into the body really nicely, and overall back into here. But overall, she's really starting to, the more and more detail is coming in each time. I'm starting to smooth out and repair the areas that I didn't like how they appeared, so these deep cuts are going to be repaired and smoothed out. But you're really starting to see the pattern of her feathers and how that appears. And then down here, how that's all going to appear. Overall, she's coming along nicely. I'm going to swing around here. And show you the back side. Zip around here. And you see how she looks. That's all for now. Bye. A progress report, an update, and a change in plans. All in one. And first of all, let's take a change in plans. What I think I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to bring this down here a little bit. I've been looking at it and looking at it. And I just want to have more of a dip into here then up into here so I'll have to reset the feathers again but it's something that I'm looking at and I'm studying I'm going to give it a couple days and put it aside and then go back into it and as you're going to be observing we have a lot more flow into her body now it goes down in and out much more dramatic much more free flowing and same thing up here this is starting to come down and into her head and to her beak area this is going to come down more into here this is going to flow down and in Right here, you can see a line here, it's going to come down and in, into her body. Now, you'll also notice I'm starting to lay in her claws. That's going to be holding the flag. So that's going to be dramatic. But basically, all the detail is coming in deeper. We'll back here away a little bit. And you can see how good she looks up here. But this, this area here is going to be coming along nicely. And that's it for now. Till next time. Bye. The test that I use, or the technique that I use, is a little chip at a time. And I work the piece down and shape it down. As you will observe down below, all these are, each one of these is a little stroke. So you can see how many little strokes it takes just to start shaping it and forming the piece. I find this informative, the fact that I don't 
do what a lot of people think carp or wood carvers do. They sit there with a mallet and they whack at the piece. Good ones just take little chips out at a time and slowly develop the form of the piece. That's it. Our journey continues as you will be observing her wing area and how that detail is really starting to define her. This is a part that the wood itself really starts dictating where I'm going to be going. It will start letting me know or just telling me. It's hard to explain, but I'm getting a flow through the wood through, and through here, so I'm going to be taking it down more and having it come around the back side of her wing area. And of course her body, a lot more detail in the feather area for the main body area. The head, the head area, and you're going to be seeing or observing how this is really flowed down into the overall body and how the head's going to be much more prouder than it was before. Much more detail. And then I'm going to move around to the back side. You can see the wing area, of course. And how the back side is really popping and coming to life. The wing, the back of the head area, the detail, and then all the way down into the overall flow of the body. Overall, moving a little fast here, but I'm sure you're getting the overall picture how nice she's coming along. That's it for now. Bye. And I just wanted to give you some insight into how we proceed on Eagle. Each feather now is coming down to shape here. Each one. And as you'll see, I've done all these other ones one by one by one, shaping and forming them. Roughly, roughly the middle here. So we'll be going over again and again until they're perfectly smooth. And then I'll be adding the feather. But it's a process, it's a bit time consuming, but overall, it's not bad. You see how these are all rough, but how nice and smooth all these are. Ultimately, they all have the same smoothness around it. I'm going to show you this side. And you'll see how I've worked on all these down here. And how they'll be flowing in and flowing into the feathers up on top. And of course, going back to this side again, you'll see the downside here. It's a little dark, but the way it goes, but you'll get an idea of how everything is progressing. I think overall, I think she's coming along nicely. More to come. Adding a different detail on her, she's going to have her feathers or her long feathers here, her wing area actually, where the feathers are going to be flowing down and then back into her overall main body. But they're starting to develop a different concept on this. I'm looking at them saying. It'd be nice and unique to have the feathers have an up and down, up and down flow to them as she, she would have if she was flying. And the same thing with her tail feathers. The same thing is going to be occurring down here. A flow in, a flow in, and a flow in. So when she's actually completely done, she'll flow right into her main body, which again has added some more depth and detail up into her face area or beak area. And you'll notice that this is almost to the point where I'm really comfortable with it now. A little bit more work here. I'm going to build up the flag area, the banner area here, the flag area, somewhat. But overall, next time you see it, you'll have a lot more progress done to her. And the journey continues. Bye for now. Working, or I say detailing, the back area of the eagle. As you will observe, you can see the back side of her beak and her head area and how it flows right into her body area. I'm going to flip this down a little bit lower and you get a good idea of how her body, her head's going to flow right into her body. And then how the feathers on the wings are getting a nice curve and a nice flow to each one flowing down and out. The back side that you probably won't be seeing but still. It's very important for me to have you can see how the feathers here are flowing down. They're starting to flow out. The banner's kind of taking shape. It's just a little bit at a time. Now these here will be flowing down the same as I've had these flowing down. That's going to take a little bit of time. Detail work, but you can see how the banner, the banner here just rolls right over into the overall body. But overall, she's coming along nicely. More to come as she progresses. Bye. Well, here we are again, and as you're going to observe, I'm adding more of a flare. I'm building this up, and I'm going to flip this up, have a little bit of flare, and have more of a flare coming down and coming in. It's, I just want to have a nice, more of a flip, so it really has a snap to it. 
And as you're going to observe here, all of these are really starting to take better shape and form. I've been spending a lot of time on that, but most, a lot of time on this. I want this a little bit thicker, a little bit higher, and a little bit rounder. And the claws, or the talons. I don't know what you'd call them. All I know is they're going to be damn sharp. If I had to get hit with these suckers, I'd run. But, as you're going to observe, I'm making the talons a little bit longer, a little bit more pronounced, and really flowing them into the body now. And the banner, some areas I didn't like how it was dipping down, so I'm making the banner more pronounced, so it has more of a fold to it and a roll to it. And here's the other side. The same thing with this side, I'm making this tail on here, go, add a little more of a flow to it so it comes down. But overall, another day, more progress. Progressing nicely on our eagle, as you will be observing, I'm starting to lay in her feathers. As I'm working on the rest of the piece, I draw in the lines and I'm starting to really carve in the long lines and the little details will come in later on. But the main thing I've been working on has been her claws, her talons, but you'll see that now they're just about to the point where I'm going to be satisfied with them. I made the banner a little bit smoother, a little more fuller, but the claws and the talons, whatever you want to call them, is nice. The end part, I made the end of the pike a little bit wider at the top, as you can see, and this is going to taper down, but I think that's going to make a little, little differences, little nuances, I think, really add to the overall appearance. But then again, I'm going to go back to the head. You can see how nice she is, and then still adding or still whittling away at any more detail to the body. And as you will observe, this is now flipped up. I think that must make a nice big difference in her appearance. That's all for now. Bye. Progressing on our eagle. As you will be observing, I'm putting in all little feathers. Now. I'm going to do this one hand to see if I can do this one hand. Nope, can't do it one hand. I uh, I need two hands, one to push and one, one to control so I can flip it in, flow it in, and you get that nice little flip on the feather. But you can see how she's progressing. I draw the lines in, go back over it again, but basically she's really coming to life. The head, the feathers in the head, her proud beak. She's been a journey so far, but it's been fun. I can flip this around this way. You'll see the back side or the rear side of her wing. And I started laying in my lines here for the feathers back there. All this will have detail in them. All the feathers all the way down and into the body. Overall, I think she's progressing nicely. More to come. And she flies on down the road. Bye. Laying out the feathers. Now, as you're going to be observing, each line has to be drawn in. So I have the proper belt between each one. Then a little bit of a twist and then the next one but basically that's what happens with each one and then they turn into that but you're noticing how it's coming along it's just a slow not just slow but it's just a time consuming process if you want it done right this takes a little bit of time but i'm sanding and cleaning and sanding and cleaning but you'll see how the feathers are all starting to get a flow to them how they're all bending down and coming down the larger feathers or wings feathers are on place and the head area every now and then I think I have everything that I'll, I'll look back and say oh I missed that and I have to go back and touch it up but it's a process one after another after another next stage is carving some more in and redrawing my lines and continuing on I keep on doing the same thing until I get it right that's all for now bye as promised more progress on our eagle Wing Victory has the front side of her wings all done, as you can see. So a little bit of wood chips there. You can see how that's progressing. Now we come to her beak or face area. And I'm going to flip this over and you're going to be able to see her back side. And the back side is going to be foreshortened because it's, of course it's bending into the body. And you can see how that's going to flow right down into the body here. But then when I put this back on, da -da -da -da, you see how it all disappears. It becomes one solid piece or one solid area. And when I finally do attach her with an epoxy glue, she'll be there forever or for as long as ever is. 
But I wanted you to see how we're progressing. It's mostly just the wing area today. I'm going to flip her over and start on the back side soon. That's all for now. Bye. This is our back side of our carving. And as you're going to observe, there are the feathers. And you can see how they've come to life somewhat. A little bit of a shine because of the primer that I put into it. Turpentine, some linseed oil, and some paint all mixed together so it really penetrates into the wood. But you can really see how it really soaks right into the, into the wood. It gives it a great overall appearance. Now I'll be flipping this over. And here's this side. And you're looking at bird's eye view. You see, whoa, that looks great, doesn't it? If I must say so myself, and I do. And then here's the wing on this side. More to come. That's it for now. Bye. Primed and sealed and ready to continue on our journey. And you'll be observing the flow of all the feathers, small ones and large ones, and how well they flow together. Here's the head area, her beak area. Once this dries, which will probably take about a good three days, maybe even four days for me to start on the next part of the journey. But you're going to get an idea of how everything appears right now. And here's the back side. You can see how the, everything just flows in. The head flows into the body. The body flows into the wing. And you're not going to see the back that much. I still take care in making sure that she has an overall nice appearance. You never know. Someone might be flying by one day with their drone and then they'll see the top of your bird. And I'd hate to see your bird be naked. Who wants to see a naked bird? I'll talk to you later on. That's all for now. I'm in the process of recarving every little detail in, on the wing. And as you observe, each wing, each feather, each edge has been sharpened and redefined to give it the best amount of detail that I can give her. And you'll notice the wing area, how that's flowing up into the overall body. Down into here, this, this part back here is going to be the flag that will be flowing up into here underneath her wing and back, and back through the wing area. And as we proceed over this side, you'll see the back side of her wing. Again, all the details are coming to life, or being brought back to life with more detail. And then we go to this side, and you'll see how she looks back here. Something that you generally won't see, but then again, it's something that I like to do. Hope you're enjoying the journey. That's all for now. Bye. She's all together now, and you observe. Everything's all sanded down, cleaned up, the whole body, up into the head area. A few little areas that we'll need to have some special patching material put into them, but basically, you'll see any little hiccups, any little dents will be taken care of. And the wing, the back, back of the head area but overall she's one hell of a carving I think her mother took three years to do and this one's taken she's taken about oh I guess about seven months so far but uh, uh, like everything else in life the journey is the reward and I'm gonna have a good reward on her she's gonna be a real beauty Next thing I'll do again is touch ups and then putting my paint on her, putting my first layer of marine base paint on her. That's it for now. More to come. Bye. Our journey continues with the painting of the back side. You'll see how she appears right now before I start with the first coat of paint. Okay. Putting it on, having it soaking in, it's a combination of, of turpentine and some linseed oil again. When you want the front, this first coat to really soak in, but you'll see how everything's been gone over again for a second and third time. Overall, I think she's going to be a real beauty when she's done, but the back side first. I'll do this now and flip it over tomorrow, and I'll be doing a flip-flop on this for about a week until I get a nice, even coating on everything. And you'll see the next stage tomorrow. Right? 
or I should say the next time you see the video, you'll see the next stage of how she will appear, but you'll see how she progresses now. You see, there's nothing more boring than watching paint dry. Well, I kind of like watching paint dry. More until later on. Bye. Just finished up putting on the first coat of paint. As you will be observing, the head's done. You'll be seeing that underneath and we've got have the feathers all done. I did it this way coming down so the paint would go underneath and seal in the bottom side so the paint wouldn't run this way so it's running into the cut so it's flowing into the piece so I'm really sealing double sealing up everything as I'm painting down versus painting this way you get a much better covering that way and you'll see the back side of her head I'll be flipping this around fast enough and you'll see all the feathers And then this side of the head, and you'll see her eye. Basically, got to shine to it because that's the first coat and it's still drying. So more to come as we proceed. That's all for now. Bye. And our journey has continued to the front of our evil. As you will be observing, everything is now first coated. The detail is going to be popped to life. The overall presentation here. The feathers flow right down into the body and into the talons. I'm advised to call them talons. So here's her head, her beak area. How nicely that came out. Banner. And then we come over to the wing area. And put this around. If you don't get disoriented more than I'm making you, but you can see how that came out. On the back side again. Overall, happy to say that we're heading in the right direction. But to set up for a day or so, then I have to be sanded it again. It's a matter of sanding and cleaning up, sanding and cleaning up. But until I get the tools done, that's it for now. As mentioned previously, here's our back side of Our Lady and you'll see how observe the first coat the first layer of paint you can see how nice and shiny it is and that this shine will remain it's going to have a high gloss finish marine base finish on her and all this red will be gold leafed and then of course this will be gold leafed up, up and through here and all the wing area will be gold leaved this is the flag and I'll be putting the white stripes on that area more gold leafing and then the back side of the flag I'll be wrapping that around taking care of that but overall and that'll be gold leaf but as you'll be observing she's coming along nicely more to come as we proceed bye Wing victory. And I think she's to the point now or to the areas where I'll be laying in my color for the rod, putting in my stripes in the flag, coming up to here, and putting my stripes in into here and the flag, and more stripes flowing back into the back area, which was the back area of the flag. So it'll be all one piece. And after that, I'll be laying in the stars. And finally, the gold leafing. But overall, she's a magnificent lady. I hope you've been enjoying the journey as much as I have in creating her. It's fun. This is the fun part now. When I get to really lay in my colors and make her really come to life. Hope you've enjoyed the journey so far. More to come as we proceed. She's getting her stars and stripes put in, as you will be observing all the stars. I do a different process. I do what I did over the years. I've developed a technique that allows me to have sharp, crisp presentation of all my images. In this case, these are my stars. And what you see in the yellow part is what they call a mask. It's a 
product that's used in, this, in the sign industry, but basically really gives me an opportunity to have nice, sharp, crisp lines. And you'll see this will be white, this will be white, this will be white, and this will be white, and the other parts here will be red. But this will give you an idea of how I proceed on my pieces. And you'll see the banner going back into the body. And then we swing over here to the end on the other part of the flag. And this part here doesn't have a little blue dot on it, but that will be white. And the overall presentation, she's coming along nicely. Next time you see her, she'll be all painted in. I'll send you that one also. The stripes and the stars are all laid in for the first coat, for the first layer. And the trick here, or the process that I do, is I use a lot of thin, even coats or layers of paint. I build them up gradually, gradually to the point where I have a nice presentation, a nice sharp line on my piece. And the next step or the next process will be after about three days, three or four days of doing this, is flipping her over and installing the brass keyhole slots into her back or, her, or the back side of her. And then making a carrying sling or a cross for her so when I carry her she doesn't get damaged when I move her. And then start to go leafing which will be sometime, hopefully next week. Oh no, I, that's right, I still have my pull to do. I'll get that one next, but I'll be laying that color in next. But overall, I think she's coming along very nicely. Bye. Well, here she is. All painted, undercoated, and stripes, stars and stripes applied. You can see how brilliant and how nice and shiny paint is. It's a great paint. Well, a great, great I guess is a subjective term, but it really flows on nicely, covers nicely. It's marine based paint and it really, in my, all my years of painting, it's probably one of the best paints. It is the best paint that I've ever had. It's called Holland Deck. Black. It's European paint, but Sometimes, you know, you find something that works that's really good. And in this case, the harder the surface and the smoother the surface, the better the gold leaf will lay and it will cover the piece. So right now, the next stage you'll be following me on is the gold leafing. And I'll be covering up all this paint. You will be observing me putting down what they call the sizing which is an oil-based solution that will assist me in attaching the gold leaf to my eagle. All this area here has been sized already and I'm sizing it down so that, so when the sizing flows, it flows down into the piece versus flowing up and, up and over top of the piece. The same thing here, everything's flowing down, back side here, the wing area. All the different areas that need to be having the sizing done are being done this way. I've already done the head area from the back side. We'll come around here real fast. And I've done all this area all in through here has been sized. So when I go to start go leaving this, I'll be doing the back side first and then doing the top side last. Just the opposite of a lot of things in life. But you can see how the sizing goes on. More to come as I proceed, but I think this is an interesting aspect a lot of people don't see. Well, it's time for me to cover this great paint that I put on here. But you'll notice how I'm blending in the gold leaf now. I got this from Seps again out of New York. And you're going to notice how the gold leaf, this is what it looks like in sheets. And then I lay it onto the piece and then I work it into all the nooks, nooks, or I shouldn't say nooks and crannies, I should say all the carved areas. But no matter how well you think you get the area, you're going to miss a few. So this is only the first time I'll be going over this. I'll be going over this quite a few times until I get all the little areas all taken care of. But you're seeing how it flows right into all the different areas. And I'll be doing touch-ups a little bit later on, but you can see how it's really going into all the different carvings, carved areas and all the flat areas too. 
but this will be a little bit of a process and time consuming but you're seeing really the first stages of our journey with the gold leafing I wanted you to see this that's all for now as you will be observing the first layering of this fine gold leaf that I got from Seps is now laid on and you'll see a few little hiccups here and I'll be touching those up before I flip her over but when you just see down here how magnificently wonderfully beautifully extraordinarily lovely she covered a few little hiccups this part when I start off on the other side I'll be flipping it over I'll start doing the front side but this is all the underneath part that you're not going to see and the back side that you're not going to observe that much but I will and we swing around here and you'll see the wing area how nicely that came out the whole thing and of course the back side here overall again very pleased with the paint and the gold leafing. More to come. She's all secured in her nest. And I will be taking her to her new home. And as you will observe, backside's done. And then I'll start working in this area. And sizing this in. This section is all done. Except for the top. It's just a part. The top part now. And you'll see how nicely that gold leaf came out. The Seps gold leaf on the Hollandack paint. It really gives me a nice hard finish. And at the same time, it gives me a great finish on the gold leaf. I think that's going to be all for now. We'll start the sizing later on. Next stage, sizing and more gold leaf. Well, I just want to give you a progress report on our eagle. As you're going to observe, the head area is done. There's a few little hiccups here and there, little spots here and there. And here's the wing area. I think it came out beautiful. And a couple, just a little, what they call Hollywood, right? Missed a spot, missed a spot there, but I'll touch those up next. And of course, the back side, what I've done a little bit differently here, what I've done previously is I put a stop to where I'm going so I can really concentrate on doing one area and going back over it when I need to go back over it until I have it all. All the little red dots or little red areas are all taken care of. Uh, other professional people will use a white background. When you use a white background, you can hide your mistakes. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't like doing that. I like to giving the client or the patron the best possible product that I can produce. That's it for now. More to come. Hope you've enjoyed, you're enjoying our journey. Bye. Our journey is coming to an end. As you will be observing, she is looking beautiful. Quality of the SEP school leaf is pretty outstanding. And the hollow lac paint that I've but the gold leaf on is, is sharp, hard, and smooth. Again, it all depends. You have a good foundation, you have a good product. You have a bad foundation, you have a lousy product. And overall, I think everybody's going to enjoy the process that she went through. Got a few touch-ups here and there to do. They call little Hollywoods where I missed a spot here and missed a spot there. So I'll be spending the next couple of days or so going over them and then getting her to her final resting place, which will be in Connecticut. There we go. Sift around to this side. And I hope you're enjoying my journey along with me. Good morning. And she is. 72 inches long, 25 to 26 inches from the top of the wing down to the bottom of the wings, all the way down. 
and the depth is nine and a half inches deep. There'll be three screws on the back side of her, and as you'll be observing, there's a basically a carrying platform that I make to carry her in or keep her secure while I'm transforming her. You'll be able to use that as a template to put up on the wall and drill straight through those existing holes to make sure that your holes line up exactly with the backside of where I have the keyhole slots installed. It's a pretty straightforward process and I'll talk to you more about that in a bit but basically that's what she's starting to look like just doing real fine touch-ups. You have to remember this is gold leafing and not gold plating. No matter how well I think that I have something there's always going to be a little fine line somewhere over that I miss but you can't see them from here. If you can't see them from heaven, you can't see them at all, right? Well, that's it for now. More to come. Bye. Resting comfortably before she flies home to her new home in Connecticut. As you will observe, the colors are all in red, white, and blue. And a nice burgundy. Or actually, I see it's a Rembrandt red. And then my airtime green for the post or pull. And the paint is really, I just can't say enough about how nicely it flows on, how smooth it is. It's Hollandack paint and the gold leaf from Sips. It's really, I use that word a lot. It's, it's a magnificent gold leafing, gold. And covers nicely, fills in nicely, and has an overall high quality shine to it. But she'll be heading back to Connecticut home for her final flying home, so to speak, on Saturday. Other than that, that's it for now. Bye. All right, this is my first video ever and showing the winged victory. In fact, I had a Coast Guard guy drive by today or walk by with his dog today. He teaches ethics or something at the Coast Guard Academy. And he mentioned him and his father-in-law stopped and looked and um, commented how beautiful it looked. And you know, just, just an incredible piece. So we're very fortunate to have Mr. Holmes as a gift and JP as the uh, sculptor, designer, artist, etc. So I hope this works for you, JP, and for our archives. And uh, we're just at a minute. I'll talk to you guys soon.